What's up guys and girls, it's your boy, The Hunter Fisher. Welcome back to the Epi Banger video. And it turns out I accidentally deleted the intro and the outro to this video. So hope you guys are okay with that. But if you guys have clicked on this video, you wanted to learn how to cast light lures on a bait caster. So this is a quick disclaimer, disclaimer before I start the video. I am using BFS reels in this video. So if you guys don't know what a BFS reel is, it's a bait finesse reel. It has a shallow spool with a lighter spool, better bearings so that it can cast lighter lures better. Now BFS reels, MGL, reels and uh, the air system and the SV reels all from Daiwa and Shimano these are all reels essentially designed to cast lighter lures better so even if you guys are using a normal bait caster say if you're using an Abu Garcia black match this video is for all reels it doesn't apply to any certain type of reels so if you're worried because I'm using a BFS reel and you're using an Abu Garcia black max that doesn't matter all reels essentially function the same and how their braking system works. The only video, the only type of reel that this video does not work for is a Corrado DC. So if you're looking at this reel and you don't have a bit, if you're looking at this video and don't have a BFS reel or an SV reel, don't worry, you're not gonna be completely inept at casting. So if you guys want to learn more about how you can cast light lures, better stay tuned for the rest of the video. I just wanted to make sure you guys knew that before I got into it, but I hope you guys are ready to learn a few things and hopefully you can take something with you to get better at fishing. I'll see you guys at the end of the video because I also deleted my outro. Let's get to it. All right guys, we are walking out to the spot where I'm gonna do the video and just show you guys what I'm using today. This is uh, the Janko Double Down BFS rod. Uh, with the Daiwa Gekka Vision Air TW. I just have this reel on this rod because it was the reel I wanted to use today and I felt like using it. And I have it paired with some like eight pound braid and a six pound leader with a snap to a 16th ounce jig head and we are going to set it up. So, but essentially most people will tell you, tell you to essentially, you don't want that to happen. What they'll tell you is they'll tell, tell you, take your spool tension and tighten it until your lure falls slowly to the ground. What I'm gonna be telling you today is not to do that. So the first step you wanna do when you set up your bait caster is you wanna take your spool and you wanna to try to wiggle it like how I am here. Mine's a little too tight now because I showed you guys that demonstration before, but you're going to, oh, mine's way too loose actually. There we go, we're tightening it up now. But I like to set mine up to where there's just a slight bit of wiggle between. If you can hear it, like just the slightest feeling of knock between the spool and the reel itself, that is the goal. You want to be able to essentially feel and have a little bit of travel, but like it's got to be the slightest bit of travel because it can't be a lot because otherwise your line might get stuck up in your reel. It might just go out of willy nilly and you won't be able to actually get a good accurate casting to it. So what we're going to do is I've got mine dialed in. I have a left-handed bait caster. Same way goes for either one. You just gotta figure out which way is tighter for you, which way is not. I always forget it. Uh, so I know counterclockwise on this side is gonna be looser. And I think counterclockwise is also looser on that. So lefty loosey, righty tighty. Just remember that. And essentially what you wanna do is you wanna have to where that knock is just barely gone, but you don't want it completely tight. Cause if it's completely tight, you're gonna lose a little bit of extra distance on your lighter lures. And then from there, I always recommend starting out, I don't know if you guys can see on my brake knob, but it, there's 20 settings right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go all the way up to 10. I know I'm not gonna be able to have to be on 10, but I like to start about halfway between my brakes. And what I do is I sidearm cast. I start out sidearm casting. If you notice, I pointed straight forward. My lure landed to the left. That means my brakes are too tight. If you were casting straight in front of you and your line is following essentially further over than when you started casting, that means your brakes are too tight. So it's stopping the distance that it could go forward with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down. Down to nine. So that's straight in front of me, but that's really controlled. I feel like I'm still slow. So with that said, I'm still going to go down another brake setting. We're gonna reel that back in. So we're gonna go down to eight. See, I'm still thumbing the spool. Uh, so essentially guys, the way that I recommend casting is to always have your thumb right about here on the spool. And then it's gonna help you get a more controlled distance. So you wanna be able to put your thumb on the spool to where if you feel any line loosening up or coming loose, you wanna be able to stop it before it happens. So my tip is for you is as you're doing these cast tests to keep going down and down and down in breaks, 
you want to start trying to put a little more gumption behind it. You want to start putting a little bit more force behind your cast, but not too much because as you're going to find out and you're thumbing it, your thumb can be a little bit more accurate than the magnetic braking can, but it also can produce more friction. So you can lose some distance, also gain some distance. There's a never ending argument behind that, but what I'm going to keep doing is I'm going to keep turning down my brakes because I know exactly where I can end up as far as brakes, but it's just a matter of learning how to thumb your spool. If you notice, I had a little bit of overrun there. So comfortably speaking, I could probably stop at seven. I'm at seven, no, I'm at six right now. I could probably stop at six, but again, I know I'm not at where I need to be. I know I can get the most control over my spool. Essentially, say if I want to do spot casting here, I'm being prevented from doing so because my brakes are too high. I wanted to cast at those elephant ear uh, plants over there on the other side, but I can't because my, my reel is still being over braked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it down to five. See, that's way more of what I wanted. And we're actually at the accurate area of where I want to be. So essentially, like I said, I was over braked. So as you start to get a use to your reel spin, you know how much spin you need to get to a certain point. So now we're down at five and we started at 10. So as that goes down for more distance casting, maybe you want to use a couple more higher brake settings and that's okay. But you never wanna to go too low without uh, wanting to uh, thumb it. So if you notice, it took less effort there for me to actually cast further than I was at higher brake settings. At higher brake settings, I could try to bomb it as much as I want, but it's only gonna go as far as my brakes want me to. But now that I've, oh, I have a little bit of overrun there. Let's let that out a little bit. But once you get to the lower brake settings, you can put less effort behind your casting and more, uh, how do you say it? <laughs> Save yourself the effort throughout the day. So now that I have less brakes, I can, more effortlessly cast to where I want to. So I'm currently stuck in a bush. That's what I'm doing. Uh, are we going to get snapped? Oh, we got out of it. Let's go boys. We got out of it. Don't worry. You already knew what was going to happen. We are the undefeated snag Kings. That's what we're doing out here, boys. Let's fix the swim bait, but I'm going to try to further explain it here. Essentially, the less brakes you have, the less effort you need to put into your reel. So that's why learning over time to rely more on your thumb and less on your braking system, you can actually go and get further distance. So I'm also the person that's also gonna argue that for efficiency, the reason why braking, braking systems exist is so that you can focus on your efficiency. So you don't have to worry about, you know, thumbing the spool because thumbing your spool is going to produce the most friction compared to any magnetic braking system. But at the end of the day, there's nothing that can be more accurate than your thumb is and also save you the amount of time and effort on the water. So at first, you're not going to be able to figure out how to thumb it perfectly every single time. But for those beginners that are wanting to cast light lures, I recommend starting at a higher brake setting, just like I switched to and watch. I barely had to thumb the spool there. So if you start at a higher braking setting and you're a beginner to bait casters and you're wanting to learn how to cast crappie magnets, for example, or uh, quarter ounce jig heads, uh, like really lightweight stuff. If you want to cast like weightless Senkos, you can do that on this setup as long as you have it dialed in correctly. So like I said, just to recap essentially what I'm going to tell you, but essentially you want to reduce the spool wobble side to side. So you're going to tighten your spool tension by going righty tighty, lefty loosey. And then you're going to start out about halfway on your brake dial. You're going to go to about halfway. So if you have an SLX, sometimes you'll have, if you have certain reels, they'll have your braking system inside the side plate. But this reel has the braking system on the exterior side of the side plate so that you, I can adjust for on the go precise measurements. But this is a magnetic braking system. Sometimes you'll have a reel that has the brakes on the spool itself. That's called a centrifugal braking system. So both braking systems don't work the same, but they are dependent on each of each other's differences. So essentially you set this up the same way, no matter what you start out halfway and you go higher, you go lower from there. Now, in the case that I cast it at halfway and I overspooled because I used no thumb at all, you actually want to bump up your brakes. So as like, say, for example, if I'm using a heavier lure, it's more likely that I'm going to want to use more brakes because there's a lot more speed that's going to be coming out of your spool at a faster rate. So the best recommendation I can give you is always start at halfway. And if you backlash, 
Well, my first recommendation, don't cast so hard that you backlash. Essentially with light lures, you want to be able to use as least amount of brakes as possible. But if you're a beginner and you're still figuring it out, use whatever's necessary. I always recommend just still lightly casting it because if you hard cast it, it's gonna land right here and you're gonna backlash. I've backlashed plenty of times to figure out and tell you why, what causes it. So you're welcome from somebody who's backlashed many times. I am the backlash king, unfortunately. But what I'm gonna tell you is essentially less breaks, more thumb, the better you get. So now I'm down to a five. That was not good. That was not impressive. Nobody put that on my, don't put that on my scorecard, please. But uh, essentially, I am doing great right now, guys. Don't worry about me. I'm just killing the game right now. One recommendation always, guys, is also always get as many tangles out of your reel as possible when you're taking out a backlash because it's going to help you in the end of the game trying to figure out how to stay more uh, clean when you're fishing. <laughs> Let me get the line on my rod, too. But as you guys saw here, I bumped my brakes down all the way to a now a five, and I did a, a less hard cast and I've gotten equivalent distance to what I was at a higher brake setting. So I put in less effort to get the same distance. So over time, you're gonna learn that you would rather spend less effort on the water because if you're taking a thousand casts a day, it's best to treat those a thousand casts like it's another pitch or a flip. You don't wanna be able to, you're not Thor trying to throw your hammer across the world, you know? So right there, I just got really good distance, landed exactly where I wanted to and that was all because i had better spool control in situations where you're wanting to skip light lures underneath docks skipping is a completely different situation contrary to flipping or spot casting because spot casting you want that accuracy and control in your reel versus skipping you're literally trying to use as much speed against the flat surface of the water to get up in there as fast as possible so we're not really talking about skipping here today oh geez we're not talking about skipping here today. I can teach that in another time, but the whole point of what I'm talking about today is teaching you guys how to cast light lures on a bait caster. So essentially, like I said, tighten your spool tension, make sure you set your brakes to about halfway and gradually go up or down, depending on if you land left or right. If you land right, you're most likely over spooling and you didn't cast very far anyways. So that means tighten your brakes. If you're going left, that means your brakes are too tight. And also you need to work on having your thumb stay consistent with the spool. The best way to learn and get better at casting is to not put too much effort into it at all. Because if you can put the least amount of effort into casting, you save more energy, you spend more time having fun catching fish. So I think that's really explains the whole thing. There really shouldn't be much more to it guys than what I just told you. Uh, there's a wind that's just blowing by. There shouldn't be much more than what I just told you, but the, my best recommendation is Get out there and practice as much as you can, guys, because the more you practice, the better you get and the better your thumb gets. I actually have a messed up thumb. I have a thumb injury from when I was a kid where I can't bend my thumb at this knuckle right here. So I actually, it took me a while to get more used to bending at just one point of my thumb. So I, it kind of took me a while to get used to thumbing like some people do. Uh, some people literally are gods. If you search up Hobie Wan Kenobi, he's one of the, probably the best casting fishermen I've ever seen. Uh, and he kills it. He's actually really good at casting. So if you guys want any more content besides mine for just more casting content of how to get better at casting, doing things like foot casting, skip casting, things like that, backhand casting, it's gonna take some time, but you guys can figure it out. But if you guys wanna see more content about casting of all sorts of different ways, you can either check out my channel or let me know whatever you wanna see next. Or you can also check out other uh, tutorials on YouTube from Hobie Wan. He has a whole series, I think, on different casting uh, styles. So if you guys wanna see more from me though, let me know down in the comment section below. But I think that's it for this little tutorial and I'll, I'll see you guys back at the truck after I fish for a little bit more. All right guys, that's the end of the video. I, I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I spent a lot of time out there making sure that I told you guys exactly everything I knew about how to get better at casting a bait caster. Now, personally, I'm working on getting better at thumbing myself because at the end of the day, I am good at a lot, but not master at nothing. So I like to make sure I cover all my bases as many ways as different possible. So if you guys heard me mention, I like to sometimes cast with a little bit heavier breaks. Sometimes I cast a little heavier with a little lighter breaks. But with lighter lures, you want to hit typically cast with a finesse cast. So you don't wanna be flicking your wrist, casting as hard as you 
can. So with a lot of all of these tips in mind, make sure you're being careful and not casting incredibly hard. Otherwise you're going to screw yourself in terms of trying to get good distance out of light lures. But I hope you guys are able to learn something from the video I provided to you today. If you guys have any questions or you want to see more videos like this, let me know down in the comments section below. I'll always be happy to help and teach you guys a few more things, whatever I know about fishing. I don't know everything, but I know a few things. So if you guys found this video helpful, make sure you like it and share it with a friend who might learn a thing or two from this. If you guys want to pick up any of the products I use in today's video or any of the products I use to get out on the water, I'll leave links down below. But if you guys want to do me a favor and make sure you subscribe to the channel because it's always going to help me out and I can always help you out in any way that I see possible. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned something and go outcast your friends now. Other than that, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed and remember, as always, fish yeah,